I'm Mike Janung with Blazing Grace and welcome to day two. I'm going to begin reading from Acts chapter 4 and Peter and John have been teaching about Jesus um, crucified for our sins, calling for people to repentance, but they'd also been saying things like you crucified him and pointing out that the rulers had crucified him and so the Pharisees had called Peter and John you know, up to them and said hey, they basically threatened them and then after that, Peter and John leave, and they go and they gather with the church, and this is where I'm going to pick it up. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all boldness, while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. He began to speak the word of God with boldness. And, and notice what's going on. They're asking for healing and signs and wonders and to speak with boldness. So they're asking for some big time faith things. To, to pray for boldness is to pray for an outlook that, God, I want you to matter more than anything, more than my fear of man or what people are going to think, including what the church thinks, because there's going to be times where I've seen this where God may put you in a place and it goes against the grain of today's status quo Christianity, which is very comfortable with going to church on Sunday and then going home and not having the Lord really have an impact on their life. So when people start getting bold, it makes others uncomfortable because what it does is it shines the light through you that these guys got a passion and a fire that I don't have and why is that? Well, oh well, I'll, I'll go back and watch my football game or my basketball game or, or whatever it is. So when we're praying for boldness, there's a heart there that's got to be single-minded. God, you must come first. God, you know that I've struggled with fear or whatever it is you struggle with that has kept you from praying this. Take a hard look at your heart as you pray for this. God, what is keeping me from this? Am I, am I lukewarm? Do I have an outlook of apathy toward you? Do I take you too casually? What is it, God? Give me boldness now. Make you the very first love in my life, my first love, God. Restore that. I want boldness, God. I want your message. I want your power. I want your fire. I want your love in me. I want the fruit of the Spirit. I want all that love, joy, and peace. So it begins with boldness and prayer, how we pray. So we, there's some people who actually pray with a sense of hopelessness, like, well, okay, I'm praying because I'm a good Christian, and that's what good Christians do, and maybe God will answer my prayer, and maybe He won't. Um, there isn't a whole lot of belief that God's there, and in Hebrews we're told if, you want, if we want to please Him, we must believe that He is, meaning He exists, and He's a rewarder of those who seek Him. So after, as we come to Him, we're coming to Him and saying, okay, God, we know that you want this. We know that you want change in our country. We know you want change in our lives. Give it to us, God. We're going after you hard for it. Give us boldness, God. Send us out into the battle. So today our focus is on praying for boldness. So to do that morning, noon, at night, uh, alone in the morning, and then if you can with a group or in your church or however you can.